Welcome back to the channel folks and to a little Berlin project that I've been working on as a sort of side project to all the commission work that I'm doing. It's good to have a side project to help keep things fresh. It's a King Tiger for Berlin based on a colourised image of a vehicle sitting beside a tree, beside a house uh, on a main sort of road which has kind of been cobbled together with parts from the factory, perhaps from the repair yard. It's got red primer running gear, red primer, turret, dark yellow hull and on the turret a dark yellow cupola and a dark yellow rear hatch and the, the gun itself is full three tone hard edge camo. So a really interesting subject. The picture also shows lots of tarpaulins of fabric of some kind draped along the side of the hull. So I'm going to base this kit on that including some green stuff work here to show the tarpaulins. So all round a great project for you folks. Something that you might want to try yourselves. I'm using an old metal and resin kit for this but I reckon one of the new plastic ones would be better because you could file off all of the tools, all of the tow cables and such likes on the side of the hull to make this look like a really stripped down vehicle. I'm going to start by showing you the green stuff work that I did. It's really simple, you can't go too far wrong with this. Now I'm using the top of my ceramic palette with a little bit of water, just a little bit of water on the top of it just to help the, the green stuff lift off so that I can get something which is approximating the size and shape that I need. Then I've just got to get it attached whilst keeping it as smooth as possible. I can rough it up a little bit with my fingertips but I don't want lots of fingerprints in there folks. And once it's attached, you can see me try to rub it smooth there with some water. Once it's attached, we can start to shape it to look as close to the original picture as I can get it but also so that it, it's got a bit of movement to it. It's hanging a bit, it's maybe drooping a bit, maybe even flapping a little bit. Um, in the wind. Once I have the basic shape I'm going to try and press in some folds here folks. You notice I've got it on quite thick. That's partly because I don't want to see the shape of all of the tools underneath. If I used a thin sheet all that would become very very clear and it would basically dominate so that putting folds in wouldn't really be possible because as soon as you press down you're just going to accentuate the shape of the towing cables or the spade or such likes. So I'm just going to and fro between my very improvised sculpting tools. I'm sure there are better things that could be used if you've got them and just getting the general shape that I want. Try to keep close to the image. The image itself I'm not sharing folks, just go online and search for Berlin King Tiger and I'm sure you're going to find it. I don't know if it's copyrighted and YouTube loves a copyright hit folks so I'm not going to take that risk. I'm going to keep it varied across the tank. For instance on the side of the turret which has got the long strip of tarpaulin, on the side I'm going to put just little rags almost of fabric hanging off the spare track. Here I'm creating a bit of a ragged edge just by cutting into the green stuff carefully. Make sure you're pressing it back down if it lifts off in this process folks. The other side of the turret is going to get a big long strip of fabric and I'm going to really tear it up. Once it's pressed into place I'm going to work the bottom edge of the green stuff with a knife to make it look as though this bit of fabric is really hanging in tatters. Next I need to make this green stuff look like fabric hanging off points that it's been tied to on the side of the turret. So I'm just going to create a sort of like very rough and untidy curtain type look where it's tied on at certain points and then hanging down in folds from those points. Once that is set we're on to the painting. Now hull primer is not the kind of colour you will get in the hull red bottle 
that you buy from Vallejo, you need a particular hull primer colour. I'm just making one up myself because I don't have one, but there are plenty out there on the market, folks. And there are good modulation sets as well, because with a monotone turret, a big lumpy monotone turret, it is possible to do some modulation as well. But here I am just putting down some base colour, which is a mixture of red and white. I'm not making it too light at this point because I want to lighten up the edges with some simple modulation. And to get those highlights, that modulated look, I am just adding more white carefully. You can see all the little sprays on the right side of the, um, the screen there, that's just me testing out the colours. Then I'm using masking, I'm just carefully hitting top edges and such likes with the airbrush to get a highlighted look. I'm not going to worry too much about this folks. Uh, I don't want it screaming light on the edges. I just want it to move a little bit from dark to light. Here I'm applying that final highlight, the one you've got to be really careful with or you are going to really overdo it. As you can see I'm using a, a nice basic little bit of masking. I do like to work quick folks. These are only war game kits so you know we can try different techniques and approaches but we don't necessarily need to kill ourselves for the time it takes to work on what could be one of a dozen kit. Now the turret was painted using Vallejo but the hull I'm going to paint with Tamiya. Dark yellow too to be precise. That's my favourite German dark yellow colour and I'm darkening it with a bit of green. I don't like to use brown because dark yellow it's got a bit of a greenish tinge to it rather than a brownish tinge so the green darkens it down in a, a much more complementary way. As with the red on the turret I'm feeling my way through this by adding a bit more green, mixing it up, spraying it again and seeing if I'm at the right point. Let's not forget the dark yellow areas on the turret. We have the cupola and the rear hatch. So a bit of careful masking, maybe with a hard edge or around the cupola, some carefully applied blue tack works well. Before applying the highlight to the hull, I'm going to tone down the shading just a little bit here, folks. You don't want the shade to be too dominant. Remember, we just want a transition. It's got to be soft. You can go for a more extreme look, but that's not what I'm after here. So just a little bit of overspraying here, just to tone it down just a touch. Worthwhile pointing out at this stage too that you can see that certain of the upper hull plates I have airbrushed with a darker dark yellow mix. That's to make the different panels stand out against each other. It's a good way of effectively modulating the top area of the hull and giving it a lot more shape without a great deal of work and really helps you define where you're putting the the, the shade and the highlight rather than trying to spray a transition across the flat area of the upper hull. So I've added buff to the dark yellow too for the highlight. Buff's a good highlighting colour here. It gives you a brighter finish without adding to the saturation. And this is where you've got to be really careful. You really just need to be hitting those edges. Use masking if required, but keep it simple, uh, folks, if you want to save yourself some time. And also, this is a point where you will know if you've got too much shade, because it'll be really, really extreme difference between highlight and shade if you haven't toned down the shade as I did in that previous stage. And we can see here with some carefully sprayed highlights into the internal areas of those darker panels, they really start to pop. You know, they got a nice clear shape developing. But we still have the gun and mantlet to do, folks, and that's hard edge three tone camo. So I'm starting by applying a mask to the turret to protect it against overspray and against to the underside of the barrel. So we're going to get that nice wavy line of dark yellow along its entire length. Next is a coat of Vallejo Saddle Brown. Just spray it across all the exposed areas on the gun and the mantlet. Then make sure you leave it long enough so that it's touch dry because we're going to mask it again. So it's more blue tack folks and here we're going to add it to where we want to keep the brown. Remember that's what we're doing here folks. We masked the yellow, now we're masking the brown. 
So you have to almost think in negative when you're looking at this. The exposed area of brown that you're seeing after the masking is going to be green because that's going to be our next colour. So for the green I am using Vallejo Italian Tank Crew. It's a good combination with the red brown. Sometimes your brown and your red can be a little bit too close to each other, especially after you do washes and such likes. But here you've got a nice clear contrast, so I recommend that combination. The last bit of airbrushing we're going to do is a very fine thin coat of gloss varnish so that we can move on to the pin wash. Now a pin wash is a way to apply the wash that will focus on the areas that you want to accentuate rather than wash the entire surface. The results will be much brighter and the shape of the vehicle will be much more clearly defined. I always start on the engine deck because that's typically the area of heaviest washing because you've normally got, certainly on German tanks, these open grill areas that you want to get looking nice and solidly dark. Elsewhere in the tank we're going to be much more careful. We're going to be applying the wash to the thin panel lines, to internal corners, to features such as bolt heads, nuts, caps hatches and so on so that this shape is nicely defined and the capillary action of the panel wash will allow us to flow around or into all these features without spilling the wash across the flat surfaces. The type of wash most commonly used for this in the hobby is an enamel wash because it is thinned with thinners which has a low surface tension and allows you to get that capillary action. Here however I am using a wash from MIG Ammo. It's MIG Ammo acrylic washes dark brown colour. I find this works more quickly and requires less cleanup than enamels and has no odours attached to it, has no vapours. You can use odourless thinners but the enamel product itself that you're using may have an enamel smell but at the very least it's going to have vapours one way or another. This is an acrylic wash that gives you just as much control as your enamel wash but it's water based. The pin wash approach does require patience. If you start rushing it you're going to end up working against the whole principle and start flooding the figure. You have to make sure that the wash itself is of the right consistency so that it flows nicely and doesn't leave too heavy a wash. Be clear on how thick you want each area of shading to be and then proceed with that in mind. Keep yourself nice and calm. If you feel as though it's getting on top of you and you're starting to rush then you need to stop, take a break and come back to it. Pin washing is a great approach to learn. I'd recommend everybody to do it. Even though you're just doing wargaming kits, there is a, you know, a limit to the amount of scale modelling type techniques that you want to learn, but pin washing is one that I think you can all benefit from in your wargaming painting collections. On the lower hull, I am going to use an enamel wash because as you can see, I'm just kind of slapping it all over here, folks. I'm just using a, a brown enamel wash here because I want to just dirty up the, the wheels and any exposed area of hull between the top of the tracks and the, the, the top of the hull itself. So we're going to create a very distinctive line, a distinctive difference between upper and lower hulls upper being cleaner, lower being dirtier. It's pleasing to the eye and it makes sense in terms of the usage of the vehicle. You will need to wait for the next day for the enamel wash to dry but the pin wash will be touch dry quite quick which allows us to move on to the highlight process without too much of a delay. Another advantage over an enamel pin wash. So after the wash the next thing we have to consider is the highlight. But in this project I've done a couple of other things first because of all of the tarpaulins that I've stuck all over this. I have put the shade colour, like the base colour for the tarpaulins down straight away. That way I can then do the highlights, touch up any areas on the tarpaulins that may get hit in the process of painting all the edges that they're close to, rather than 
trying to work around all the highlighting with a larger brush when I'm putting the base colour on for the tarpaulins. So doing things a little bit out of order, but it's a real benefit to it in this situation. I'm approaching the highlighting in two main stages. There's going to be an edge highlight and then an internal highlight, so to speak. Now, when I say edge highlight, that means I'm going to take a brush, which is in decent enough condition, but it doesn't have to have a very sharp point on it. And I'm going to bounce it along all the exposed edges. And that way I'm going to be highlighting the edge, but not making it a solid line. The color I'm going to use, in this case, I'm going to be using light mud which is a, a brighter colour compared to the base colour, but it's not too saturated. I also use Iraqi sand where I want a, a more saturated edge. There may, for instance, be other camel colours on the, um, the tank itself, and I maybe want to adjust something a little bit more saturated. So it's either light mud or Iraqi sand. Patience is required here again, folks, just like when we were doing the wash. But you will notice, for instance, when you highlight all of the edges of like the armour joints and such like, so you're really going to see the shade and highlight working together to help define the shape and th things really going to start to pop. The final stage of the highlighting process, step three, so to speak, is going to be the chipping and scratching. Now, that might not sound like highlighting, but it typically is because you're going to be working edges more. You're going to be using the the lines that you've painted on the outside edges, for instance, or on the edges of panels, corners of panels and hatches and such like. You're going to use them as a starting point to develop your chips and scratches. And then you're also going to be painting thin lines across flat surfaces, such as a front armour plate, the, the side plates across hatches again and it helps break up these larger areas and bring them into a bit of focus. We're using the same highlight colour and then once that's been painted we're going to take a few of these areas and paint in a line of German Camel Black Brown or Dark Crust. So it's a line within a line or a chip within a chip. That way we're going to show lighter paint that's been exposed by um, shallow chips and then a base armour that's rusted down that's been exposed by deeper chips. For these darker areas I use a brush with a very fine point on it and I should say at any time during this chipping process folks you've got to make sure that your paint consistency is correct, that the paint is at the right mixture so that it flows off in a nice solid line either sitting on an edge or sitting on a point or sitting around a panel line. You don't want it to be thin so that it flows into panels that you've already washed or flows off the top of sharp edges, but you also do not want it to be dry so that it's dragging off your brush. You want it to flow nicely and a little bit of experience will tell you when you've got that right. The turret is going to be a little bit different, but basically the same. I'm still going to be doing edge highlights panel lines, details, now working through that. And I'm going to be doing some chipping, but different from the hull. Because I'm imagining the hull as being something that's been recycled, refurbished, whereas the turret is something that's just come out of the factory. So the chipping, I want to be superficial. Also, if there were any deeper chips on the turret, it's just going to be exposed raw metal. It's not really going to have a chance to have rusted down. So I don't want to have to paint any metallic glints showing through the red because I think that would just look very confusing. I should point out that the highlight colour for the red is just a bespoke mix. You know that based on the same red and white I use for the turret to a mix so it's efficiently highlighting the edges without going too pink. Now to break up the turret a bit just as we did with the hull I'm going to just paint little tiny little spots, little irregular shapes, all of them small, across the surface. This will help break up all of the large panels that make up the surface of the turret and bring them into focus as well. But let's not forget the gun barrel and the mantlet folk because we've got different colours there again. So to highlight the green, I'm going to be using green grey. It's a great colour to highlight green because it lightens the edges 
but it does not saturate. It doesn't look too bright. And then for the brown, I'm going to use old wood and that works well with this Tamiya red brown colour. And I'm also going to put just a little, little sort of worn area along the top ridge of the barrel so that it catches the eye a bit. It's a bit of a highlight, but we're doing it in the way that we would if we were chipping. Now we can get on to these tarpaulins. So, first thing I decided after I put the undercoat of US Olive Drab onto them was I wanted to keep that overall consistent look to them. I'm going to paint different colours as main colours and highlights, but the overall look I want to be this dirty, earthy kind of tone. Now I'm going to paint these tarpaulins in a way that will be familiar to you if you follow my tutorials on painting infantry. It's a layering approach, building up from the shade colour up to the highlight. I leave very little shade when I'm painting infantry. Most of the figure is the main colour. In this case though, as I said, I want to be leaving a lot more of the shade colour. That's the olive drab. Check the description for the colours I've used for the whole project, but in particular for the tarpaulins folks. I'm going to be making sure that they are similar to each other and that I don't use the same highlight from one colour to another. That's something you can do when you're painting a lot of greens, but if you do, that highlight colour tends to just make everything look the same. It's, it's quite a strong effect. Keep the colours varied across the surface, but don't use too many colours. You don't want it looking like a harlequin, unless of course you fancy depicting them having stolen the curtains out of someone's house and draped their tank with them. You know, that did happen during the war, uh, for instance, in the winter, where curtains were taken out um, if they were white and bed sheets and so on. So there is a bit of artistic, historically artistic license that you can apply there, but we want things to look dirty and flat compared to the bright surfaces of the tank itself here. And then for highlighting, it's important we're using a brush with a fine point because we're only going to be painting very fine lines here. We just want high spots to catch the eye, accentuate the shape and flow of the tarpaulins, accentuate where there is shading. By that I mean place your highlight beside the shade itself. It's not necessarily always going to be on the highest point. If you've got an, an open edge then great, highlight goes on that, but if you've got a flatter piece of tarpaulin with shading and the main colour in there, you want to be putting the highlight between the main colour and the shade and that really makes the shape pop. The spare tracks I painted earlier with a coat of German grey. That grey also works well for this. German grey was a stronger contrast here, that's why I chose it. Now I'm going to give that a wash of light rust. That's Fellagio Light Rust. You can use pigments for this as well, but it's such a small area that you're going to get just the same effect and even more control by just simply using an acrylic wash. I'm now going to add some streaks, some rain marks to the hull and the turret. There's lots of large surfaces on this that would benefit, especially the modulated areas would benefit from some streakiness. It kind of just ties everything together but it also looks quite good in terms of weathering. It's an approach, a technique that we're familiar with and it's worthwhile practicing. There are dedicated enamel products you can purchase for rain marks and for streaking, but I'm going to continue using my MIG Ammo acrylic washes. The key element of whatever product you're using is that you can use either thinner for enamels or water for acrylics to draw the streak out to the length and thickness, you know, opacity that you're looking for. And that's where you need something that dries slow. If you try this with ordinary acrylics, you're probably going to find that it will dry a lot more quickly than you want and you will not get a chance to fully work the streak. What I'm doing, as you can see, is just adding little dots 
against areas on the hull that perhaps water would gather on and then draw down from and then I'm drawing that down with a brush which is only just damp. If the brush is wet, regardless of whether it's enamel or acrylic that you're using, if the brush is wet it's just going to pull across the surface and you don't want that. What you want to do is draw the pigment of the paint down and then perhaps soften the line, increase or reduce the size of the line, move the brush up or down the way, just depending on what will give you the finished look. A bit of practice and you'll, you'll start to figure out how to work the streaks to your satisfaction. Less is definitely more for this approach folks. Don't cover the whole thing in streaks, make sure the streaks aren't too strong either. If if you're not careful you're going to end up with something that looks a bit like a it's behind bars you know there's it's a zebra and we don't want that we just want accents here and in that respect you can also mix up the colors that you're using here i am using an ochre color for a few more softer streaks so that's ochre and the dark brown it's a good combination helps weather everything down without relying too much on one colour, especially where it's darker compared to the rest of the hull. At this stage, you can also lighten the bottom edge or even the top edge, depending on the relative colours of the vehicle and show a gathering of dust, but it helps define the shape as well. It's, it's kind of like modulation after your airbrushing. Don't be afraid of this technique folks, I do recommend it if you want to add that little bit extra to the finished look of your models. If you get the right product, you just need to practice. And one last step, I'm going to add some concrete dust to the wheels, just to the wheels. Now, I'm using pigments for this, you have to be careful with pigments. You th when you're working with them and you're not experienced, it looks as though you're getting nothing back from it when you've applied it to the vehicle. You can't really see anything because it's taking time to dry and then you end up putting more on and you end up with too much on and then it becomes a bit tricky to remove the excess. It can be done, but it is tricky. So be patient, add a coat and then let it dry and then add another coat. And I did that a couple of times with this until I was happy with it. And in this case, again, it is very much a case of less is more. I just want a dusty look, uh, not an earthy look. One point to note, when you set the kit down for the wash to dry, you can see there's a lot of liquid in it. So set it down on its side. Don't set it down flat on its tracks or all the, wa the water and the pigment will drop to the bottom of the wheel. You want it to settle across the flat of the wheel, not just on the bottom. After a coat of matte varnish, that'll be as done. So, an interesting project with some good techniques, some good approaches for us to try on our wargaming kits. Hopefully you enjoyed it and thanks for watching. Thanks to all the subscribers that are out there and to the people who drop into the channel from time to time. If you'd like to support the channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button, and we'll definitely see you all on the next one.